Welcome back to the Boo Review, everybody. Today is going to be a little more like your average Boo Review that you're looking for after that depressing stuff that Jared brought on you <laughs> and infested <laughs> your house with. You're haunted now. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, top five poltergeist cases of all time. Number five. Odon right. Poltergeist. Number five is the Odon Poltergeist. In doing research, this is not one that I was initially familiar with. It takes place in good old Indiana. Is that an Indiana accent? I don't Who think so. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely not. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows what people in Indiana sound like. <laughs> people in Indiana know who people what people Dude. in Indiana sound like. <laughs> Indiana's got nothing. What do they got? Potatoes? That's Idaho. <laughs> yeah, that's Idaho. <laughs> so nobody knows. Corn, okay. maybe? All right. That's Move sweet on. Indiana corn. Move on. Let's hear the story. Except... In the year of 1941, a farmer, a William Hackler, brought some coal. No, wait, that's the wrong poltergeist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that one invo this one involves no, fire and so does no. the later one. Okay. <laughs> he was a farmer, though. He went out to begin his day, and then he turned back. Smoke was billowing from his house. Oh, no. So he returned home, okay. found a fire, seeming as if it was leaping out of the walls and burning the house from the inside out. But he put it out and he was like, that was bullshit. And he called the, the oh. fire department and they were like, man, that's weird. All right, we got it settled. Let's go about our day. So we went to leave again. So the, wait, the wait. house burst into flame again somewhere in the house oh. inside of a mattress. Okay. So and then, the first fire was real. They're, but they're all real. Oh, okay. Well, because you said seemingly and I thought that the oh, fire like, wasn't real. It, it seemed like it was burning from inside the wall out. That's what I mean. A burning from outside, like like burning. you know, the, like the, the wall. It, the house is made out of goddamn wood because it's a farmhouse. So there's wood here and wood here, and it was like burning from inside the wall out. I guess inside okay. the wall out. Okay, so there's something accurate. weird about the, how the fire started. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Mysterious. Okay. Cool. The weird thing about it is it happened 28 times. Wow. 28 okay. times, mysterious flames burst or erupted into his house. Wow, that's very strange. Yes, and. What you think about this? <laughs> well, think either he has an electrical problem. That I, they're just see, not, they're you, not solving. I figured you would say that. Okay, go ahead. But there was no electricity in the house. It was not wired for electricity. Like, you, like you're looking for my approval. Pretty scary, right? <laughs> Woo! It's pretty weird. It's very it's strange. Pretty, it's it's strange. pretty poltergeisty. So wait, was, but they, they ruled out that it was an electrical issue. Uh, because the house, it was an old farmhouse not wired for electricity. Oh, oh, that is very strange then. Are you sure there wasn't somebody like going over there and like lighting it on fire and watching them come out and leave. One of the theories was that it was a prank played yeah, by his children. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty harsh prank. <laughs> the parents' house on fire. You know what it is? The, kid, the children did not want to work on the farm. And that was their way to distract from having to work. That makes sense. Yeah, that I think that's sense. what happened. Other theories for the causes, natural gas leaks, and yeah. print, and some <laughs> some ideas that rogue electromagnetic fields somehow caused it. <laughs> Dude, that was, that was fucking that was electromagnetic the quote I found fields. in an article. Rogue, <laughs> rogue. Uh, rogue, rogue magnetic fields, excuse me. Oh my God. Um, it was magnetic fields. So, get you. Hackler get you didn't buy it. He had the house demolished, built a new home, and he never ran into this issue Sweet. again. Okay, cool, good for them. And next up, we got number four, the Enfield Poltergeist. All right, so most of you, most of you probably know Enfield. I wanted to start with something a little more exotic with the Odon, Indiana Poltergeist. Exotic, uh, <laughs> Indiana. Okay, but just ahead. in case you don't yeah. know, it's also the source material of The Conjuring Two. So you got Enfield, England, two eighty four Green Street, nineteen seventy four. Okay. Sorry, 1977 mm -hmm. nineteen seventy seven to nineteen seventy eight. Our characters: Peggy Hodgson and her three children, Margaret, Janet, and Johnny. Billy, mm -hmm. Johnny. It was Johnny. Johnny. The core parts of it, stuff moving around the house, how it starts, bringing police. The police can't do anything about it because there's no one breaking the law. Right, yeah. They ghosts, aren't, are ghosts, ghosts aren't. Ghosts aren't. Ghosts don't yeah. uh, follow the law. Yeah, they they're don't, lawless. They don't. They're like cowboys. Exactly. They're like, what well, we do? So they call the, what is it called? Society of Psychical Research. And that's where you get Maurice Oss. Ah, okay, cool. And he made a bunch of the famous recordings that you can still look up online in here because I guess the lead in for these recordings is the spirit, the poltergeist of the house, would possess Janet and speak through her Ooh. in a very deep, gruff voice. Yeah. I want you to tell me whether you remember what happened to you when you died. Days before I died, I had a problem blowing. Then I had an emmerich, and I fell asleep, and I died in a chair. 
in the corner downstairs. And if you've seen The Conjuring 2, they also reference back to yeah. that as well. I've, <clears throat> I have heard the original recordings. They are pretty creepy. I'll play some right here, but yeah. Yeah, they are. Creepy. They are. So what do you think about this? John Bailoff, he was a mm -hmm. former president of the, of the Society of Psychical Research. Mm -hmm. He said he didn't buy the recordings that he thought that Janet was a talented ventriloquist. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that... The voice is pretty extreme. I, and also She's Anita an 11-year-old girl. She's an 11-year-old girl. Hmm. Can we listen to it so I can kind of decide whether this feels like it's actually a man's voice coming out of her or her just doing a man voice? Let me let me hear it. It's been a while since I've heard it. I remember, I remember when I first heard it thinking it was creepy, but I, I, need, to, I need to examine it here. Say Dr. Bell. Come on. Come on, say it for me, Dr. Bell. Now it's supposed to be a little girl. Is it? Is there any uh, video of her at all, or is there another one where she's a little bit clearer? Don't know. But that question is a good lead in. Let me reference back to the document. Uh, one of Anita's and Beloff's big things against her is that the majority, if not all, of the activity would happen whenever you Janet was not being observed. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Or in the case, I believe it was Anita one time went to be in the room, but it was insisted that Anita could not face Janet. Ah, uh, but I'm reading right here. It says Janet admitted to faking a couple of instances, but even in later years insisted that only about two percent was fabricated. Yep. And later so, in later interviews with her like in the last like I think there was one about ten years ago. I will say that the voice does sound like a intentionally creepy voice. I think it'd have been weirder if it was like a man's voice. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. It feels like it's something that's supposed to be intentionally kind of messed up and weird mm -hmm. versus like a, a real man's voice. Was, if, if we had like video of a real man's voice coming from her throat, mm -hmm. you know, like that would be very, very strange. But that, I don't think that's mm -hmm. what we got here. Uh, there's also the picture, the really famous picture of her yes. like floating over the bed. But a lot of people are just like, she's jumping, right? She's an 11, yeah. she's an energetic 11 year old girl. Uh -huh. She should just be jumping around. Mm -hmm. It could just the, the photo could be taken at just the right point where mm -hmm. she is suspended in midair. Yeah, I, I, I don't buy it either. Uh, but we are the skeptics on the Conjuring too. That they they really were talking about how much of an asshole they were for being skeptics. Yeah, only in that movie. But I, I, hate, to, I hate to say it, but I think that this is probably a fake uh, circumstance. So Janet yeah. Janet continues to say that it was real. I yeah. don't know if there has been more recent interviews with Margaret yeah, and Johnny. Know. I mean, if I mean, some of the lived there. If some of the more elaborate things that was happening in the Conjuring Two actually happened, I think people would be like, "Okay, this is real." Yeah, but that's not what happened in the real case. Some of that stuff, like towards the end. Unless of the movie there's happened. unless there's something we're missing here, but all this seems like it could be. But expected. supposedly, supposedly it settled down, never quite 100 percent stopped, but settled mm -hmm. down a lot after they were visited by a priest in August, sometime mid late '78. Also, uh, well documented. Case, oh, there was also so some good. some also furniture and objects moving around. Who else uh, saw that? I think supposedly the mother may have seen the chair move, the one that Bill Wilkinson died in. Bill Wilkinson was the poltergeist that haunted the place. He died there, hemorrhaged to death in the chair in the corner. The chair was there when they bought the place. Part that's all part of the story anyway. Uh, obviously, it's a big case worthy of a lot of debate. Mm -hmm. But there you go. That's that's infilled. So next up, McKenzie Poltergeist. Here's another one you may not know as much about as Enfield. We kind of have two dates to look at for this. We'll start with December 1998. Whenever a homeless tramp. A tramp like a dog? No, like a person. A person. A kid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, a, a poor homeless man. Okay. Stranded in, in the elements and he needed a place to seek shelter. So he ended up in a graveyard, Greyfair's Kirkyard, okay. the Covenant, the Covenant, the Covenanters prison section uh, at Greyfair's Kirkyard. Grey, sorry, Greyfriars Kirkyard. Grey Kirk All this Scottish nonsense. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and this is in Edinburgh, Scotland. He broke into a mausoleum. He sought shelter in there. Supposedly he kind of pillaged around, probably seeing if there was anything he could take or okay. whatever, because he was homeless Got after you. all. He descends to the second level, which is well known in the mausoleum, but he falls through the floor in there into a third level. And uh, the third level is filled with corpses, and because of the way that wow. they were buried, they were semi-preserved. 
Ooh, you know? okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah. And he got the fuck out of there. Weird. Nobody ever saw him again. Uh-huh. But he spooked some guards. The guards went and like, they saw what had happened and they, okay. they found the area. So it turns out this is where Sir George McKenzie, the uh-huh. namesake of the McKenzie poltergeist, affectionately known as Bloody McKenzie, had many bodies buried of Covenanters. I had to look up what that was. was (laughs) People in Scotland at the time that were wanting to preserve the Presbyterian Church Mm -hmm. and prevent the Episcopal Churches that Sir George McKenzie wanted to replace everything with and make it a whole Episcopal nation. Okay. I don't know. I don't even know what the difference in Presbyterians and Episcopals is. He killed thousands of Covenanters. Okay. Yes. And a time known as the Killing Times. Wow. And naturally, whenever this all found out, the mausoleum was shut down. Um, Eventually, a woman who was researching it all did get the rights and permissions to lead City of the Dead tours to the mausoleum and through it. like pretty controlled tours uh-huh. and in the article i could probably have found a more recent number but in the article i was reading from 2012 i recorded 450 attacks associated with the mausoleum have been documented with up to 180 people wow. that have lost consciousness and is one of the most active locations with stuff frequently occurring there people kind of seeing things finding marks on their body sometimes it disappear quickly sometimes it lasts sometimes it happens while they're there sometimes it's after they've left we gotta visit this place for sure so, this is yeah. somewhere to visit so this yeah. this is this is a pretty big deal right yeah here. um supposedly one of the most well known and most active places of poltergeist activity in the world mm-hmm. other explanations mm-hmm. potentially there is at the Edinburgh University of Artificial Intelligence. They have big electromagnetic machinery, and they say maybe it has something to do with that yeah, and the so town and the stuff fields. that's going on. Yeah, with that. Blame it on the fields. <laughs> you blame it on the fields. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I didn't even look into this because it sounded ridiculous. If any about if, if this makes more sense to somebody out there, research it and tell us about it. Yeah. But uh, there's a story of pheromone imprints from all of the bodies and the people Ooh. that have died there and that are buried there and the mass grave and everything. A pheromone, and then, so a chemical that's seeping from the bodies that could make you potentially hallucinate is that what they're trying to say maybe something i mean that's yeah, on the is right that a, track is that that you, and that you can experience the feelings and like the of all, of all the people that were died there and you get that the nausea and like the oh my god this is a horrible i mean place. i could see a chemical or something like you know inhaling but these people have been dead for a long time i wouldn't think that you oh uh, sir gregory that was a 16th century affair i mean i can imagine if you had like been around like a recently deceased body that there might be something from it that could cause you to you know have this effect it's become you, part of the earth but yeah but at a certain point you're this the decomposition is not gonna you're not gonna be affected by uh, it. i wasn't impressed by the pheromone imprint yeah, story I kind of glossed over because it sounded like, ridiculous. Uh, yeah. If it makes more sense to somebody out there, yeah, look into know. it and tell us about it. All right, number two. The, the Hornsey, Hornsey Cole, Cole Poltergeist. Guys. This is the Cole thing you want to talk about yeah. earlier when you messed yeah. up. Yeah. This is 1921. Uh-huh. 8 Ferriston Road in Hornsey, London. London. All right. Get old London. <laughs> is, that, is that British? Yeah. Hello. It's Oil. London. Mr. Frost and his children. I can't keep it up. Hello, <laughs> governor. Hello, governor. I Hello. just do. I just do. Uh, Dick Van Dyke. Come on, <laughs> come down the alley. Let me give you a stabbing. What happened with the Hornsey Coal Ghost? Mm-hmm. Some of the stuff that I read about this claims that it's one. Of, it is the most well documented pol- uh, poltergeist activity case because of okay. how involved the police were. Mr. Frost and his children, Gordy, Gordy Birdie, Birdie, and Muriel. Muriel. Mr. Frost goes out and he buys coal for the winter. Okay. Makes sense. He brings yeah. it in. He's got a couple of buckets of it. He loads some in the uh, the heater behind the grate and everything. But the coal leaps from the heater, Ooh. bounces across the floor, and explodes. The coal in the heater explodes. The coal in the buckets explodes. Okay. And he called the police. All right. The policeman came. Who knows what the attitude of the policeman was, but apparently he was, was probably just pretty snarky and like, shit right in this report right, and yeah. everything but an investigator at the police department read it and was like what the fuck uh-huh. i gotta go see this uh-huh. so he goes to mr frost and he's investigating he's mm-hmm. checking things out picks up a lump of coal leaps from his hands splits into three pieces bounces across the floor and explodes okay that is strange newspapers published information about the claims so there's just a lot of coverage about the incident did it keep happening i mean what ha- I, I, it, it says kept, right here uh, it kept happening noises they started to hear noises through the house okay. and everything like that this got to the point where one of the children 
was taken to Lewisham Hospital due to a nervous breakdown, oh, and geez. his daughter Muriel passed away, and he attributed it to her taking ill from the anxiety and stress of everything that was going on. Wow. Okay. So I mean, I found, so... I found some some other information of I guess people looking into this all after the fact, and they think that it was possible Muriel could have had meningitis. There might have been a pre-existing something, something going on with her. Wrong. I saw the word. I saw meningitis being thrown around a little bit. Okay. Mr. Frost contacted a vicar. And he came, investigated the house, did his vicar thing, and everything settled down afterwards. Who's vicar? Who is who is a vicar? A, a vicar is a title. I don't know exactly what they are. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, what actually happened? Nobody knows. That's a weird one. That's a weird one. Finally! Number one. <laughs> Is that drones? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Black Monk House. The Black Monk House. It's a sunny 1966 on 30 East Drive in Yorkshire at the mm. Checkerfield Estate. East Yorkshire. East Yorkshire. Yeah. Lived in by Jean and Joe Pritchard with her son Philip and daughter Diane. Philip 15, daughter 12. Or daughter 12, that's her name, daughter. <laughs> Philip and daughter. <laughs> they were very imaginative. Mm. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Dude, the black, <laughs> the black monk strangling you? I think so. <clears throat> um, so they they acquire the house or buy the house or whatever. Stuff starts to kind of start happening. They, they claim that they see the image of a person, like a dark image, seemingly like they're wearing robes. The figure gets the name the black monk. I don't recall if they gave it that name or if there was an early picture taken that someone described it as a black monk. And then after some research, it turns out in the past, there was a gallows nearby or across the street from where the house is now, like way in the past, there was a gallows there, mm -hmm. in which an, a monk was hanged for raping uh, a young girl. Shouldn't that stuff be happening across the street and not here then, if it took place across the street? Maybe it was in the same location. Okay. The house <laughs> yeah, the all right. Fast forward to the stuff actually happening in what is known as the Black Monk House, which still exists. It's kept locked. It does have an owner. And you can rent the house out and stay there. Oh, cool. We got to do that. Do and people do it. How much is it? it? I don't know. We got to look this up. Somebody yeah, let man. us know. Somebody do the research. Somebody started GoFundMe to send the boot review yeah. to the Black Monk oh house for we a love, weekend. Oh my gosh. I'd hang out with every single one of you if you did that. <laughs> you get a lot of typical stuff, lights turning on and off, uh -huh. noises, uh, water pools forming. Uh, that's... I don't know about that. That's uh, just leaky pipes. Yeah. But uh, one of the more violent things is you get slashed pictures and photos. That's weird. So okay. actual damage to the hmm. house. Okay. Um, you get objects levitating, disappearing, moving around. That's pretty usual. You get smells. Probably delicious smells. You said foul smells, so I'm assuming. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> ever claims ghosts when there's a strange, delicious smell. Well, yeah. Mm, still smells good. Well, we man, got ghosts. Like, okay. Nobody notices them when they're nice. Yeah. Ghosts. <laughs> uh, and that's when they become poltergeists. Well, people also heard apparently heavy breathing sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like they were being yeah, watched, stalked. And it was furniture kind of, overturned. Yeah. yeah. So it was kind of messing with the family. So it has kind of a, a certain level of violent mm -hmm. tendency, and it seemed to have focused on Diane, the young girl, mm -hmm. which goes back around to the story of the monk that was hanging nearby for the rape of a young child. Eesh. So it focused on that's Diane. Weird. But anyway, that's been the top five poltergeist stories that happened pretty much in London, except for one, which was in Indiana. We could have caught, if you just found one more London story, we could have had the top five uh, London hauntings right there. <laughs> Missed opportunity. Thank you very much, everybody. You can buy this. This shirt is not a Blue Review merch shirt. You can buy not but, this. But you can buy one. I don't have it nearby. I left it in there. But you can get it on Spreadshirt with other sweet ass Blue Review merch. You can support us on Patreon. All right, it cut off while Jerry was trying to find the shirt. It's I was just wearing it. Look in the last video. You can buy that shirt. Or just look at the link in the description and go to Spreadshirt and see it there. Uh, you can buy sweet ass merch. You can support us on Patreon. Because mm -hmm. YouTube don't support us with ad revenue. That's for goddamn sure. Where's yep. my horn? Where's your horn? Get your horn out. <laughs> this is for the patrons. Mm -hmm. Shit. <laughs> I'm falling. Number one creepiest band right here. That's <laughs> <laughs>